Many people choose their multiple sclerosis medication based on clinical factors like recent relapses, MRI findings, or comorbid medical conditions, or even biased reasons like the habits of their physician or even advertisements seen on TV. But what if medicine could be personalized and you could choose a medication based on your unique genetics? Well, according to this article, it may be possible. They found that carriers of the HLA-A301 gene variant, or allele, had a better response to the medication glutyramer acetate, brand name Copaxone. Is this the start of personalized medicine in MS? So in this study, they looked at prior studies, prior clinical trials and observational studies, and compared people who took glutyramer acetate or another class of multiple sclerosis medicines, beta interferons. Now, I know many people watching this aren't making a choice between these two drugs. These are older drugs, not as popular in the United States. States and Europe, though still widely used in many countries, and I have patients to this day who have been stable on them for decades. However, I think this is an important proof of concept, so stick around. I'll talk a little bit about the future of personalized medicine at the end. So beta interferons are a class of medicines. These are naturally produced substances by the liver in response to viral infections, but they can be engineered as these drugs, Avonex, Plegerty, Rebif, beta seron Extavia. There's beta interferon 1A and 1B, which have a lot of similarities. But one thing to note is the high dose, high frequency beta interferons, Rebif, beta seron and Extavia are believed to be more effective than the once a week formulation Avonex. These drugs are older, lower efficacy disease modifying therapies. They're not as good at stopping new MRI lesions and relapses compared to modern multiple sclerosis drugs. They can cause side effects such as muscle aches, flu-like symptoms, or occasionally elevation of the liver enzymes, though there's no significant increase in the risk of infections. These are not considered to be immunosuppressants. Glutyramer acetate is an unusual drug. It's actually a combination of many peptides containing the amino acids alanine, glutamate, lysine, and tyrosine, which are arranged randomly. So it's not really one drug. It's kind of like thousands of drugs at once. And these amino acids are enriched in myelin basic protein, one of the natural components of myelin. So this drug is thought to work like an allergy shot. In other words, you show your immune system peptides that are kind of similar to myelin. And over time, you may induce tolerance so it's less likely to attack your own myelin. The brand name are drugs such as Copaxone and Glitopa, though almost everyone in these studies, to my knowledge, received the formulation Copaxone. These are safe drugs, not immunosuppressants. You can get a local reaction in the skin because it's a subcutaneous injection and some other side effects, but no increased risk of infections. These are the five studies they analyzed. The National MS, Nation MS study, this is a cohort study in Germany. They had 1,374 people from 22 centers. This is an observational study, not a randomized trial. The BioNAT study, this is from France, where they were actually studying the drug Tysabri, but they did an analysis at the start of the study looking retrospectively at the, the drugs they took before and their current characteristics. Now, the most valuable piece of data, in my opinion, is from the COMBRX study. This is a randomized controlled trial, and they were trying to answer the question, can you take both glutyramer acetate and Avonex and get double the effect? It turned out the answer was no. Taking both medications was not better than taking only Copaxone, which is why we don't use this approach. Copaxone was a little bit more effective than Avidex. So this is a randomized trial, so it's less biased than the other studies because whether or not someone got Avonex or Copaxone was completely random. They took out all the confounding. There's the MS EPIC study. This is a cohort study at the University of California, San Francisco in the United States. They have some very good data on prognosis of MS, and they took a backwards look at did people do differently if they took Avonex or Copaxone or other beta interferons and compare that with their genetics. The Accelerated Cure Project, ACP, this is from PCORI, they looked at 3,200 people with MS from different regions. So now I'll shift to explaining the genetics. So the HLA genes, or 
human leukocyte antigen genes are on chromosome 6, and they're highly variable from person to person. No two people aside from identical twins have the exact same HLA genes, and there's class 1, class 2, and class 3 HLA genes, and they're involved in how the immune system interacts with the environment. So the gene in question is an HLA class 1A gene, and it's involved in creating proteins related to the major histocompatibility complex class 1. Now this is a cell surface protein on the surface of antigen presenting cells that interacts with T cells, in particular CD8 positive or killer T cells. So this protein complex would bind an antigen like a foreign protein and then show it to T cells and then perhaps your T cell would develop an immune response. So you can imagine variations in genes cause variations in these proteins which can sort of change the way your immune system interacts and responds to the environment and could even change the response to treatments like glutirum or acetate. So in general, HLA haplotypes really didn't affect whether or not a certain medication was beneficial. For instance, HLA DRB1-1501, the gene most associated with risk of MS, if you have two copies of this allele, you have an eightfold risk of getting MS, but it had no effect on whether or not glutirum is a better medication. However, HLA a301 did have an effect, and I'll show you the different studies. So we'll start with the COMBRX trial. This is, again, the randomized trial comparing Avonex versus glutirum acetate, Copaxone versus both. So in green, we have the interferon, Avonex. And on the left-hand column is annualized relapse rate, relapses per person per year. So fewer relapses, a lower bar would be better. And they divided it into people who were negative for the gene, on the left-hand side and positive for the gene on the right-hand side. And you can see there was really no significant difference between the pink bars, Copaxone, and the blue bars taking both medications, which is why we don't give people both Copaxone and Avonex. Now you can see that in people who are negative for the gene, maybe Copaxone was slightly superior to Avonex in green, but not a statistically significant difference. You can see the air bars. But in people who are positive for the gene, there was a large difference. People taking Copaxone had far fewer relapses, a p-value of 0 0.00018. It seems like this gene predicts that Copaxone will work well for you. Let's go to Germany. This is the Nation MS cohort. We're looking at the proportion of people who are free of relapses. So everyone starts off not having a relapse, and then over time it goes down as more and more people have relapses. And on the left are people who are negative for the gene. On the right, people who are positive for the gene. In pink, we see glutirum or acetate or copaxone. In green, we see beta interferon. And this could be different beta interferons, not just Avonex. We see that in green. So in people who were negative, they were about the same. Maybe beta interferon interferons were slightly superior, but in people who are positive for the gene, people getting Copaxone had fewer relapses by about 33% less. And this is pretty striking. Again, the gene predicts response to Copaxone. And again, HLA DRB1-1501, there was no effect whatsoever. It's unique to this allele. How about France? This is the Bionat study. Again, this is the study on Tysabri, but again, we're looking at the baseline data data looking back, and they looked at the MS severity score. This is a measure of disability in MS. And if you look at people who are negative for the gene and compare those who got prior glutirum or acetate versus those who did not previously get glutirum or acetate, their disability was about the same. But if you looked at people who were positive for the gene, those who got glutirum or acetate had lower MS severity on average. Again, having this gene and getting the drug Copaxone seems to predict lower disability. Let's go west, University of California, San Francisco. Here they're looking at change in expanded disability status score, EDSS. This is a different measure of disability in MS research. Again, negative for the gene on the left, positive for the gene on the right. If you look at people who are negative, their change in disability was about the same whether they received glutirum or acetate or a beta interferon medication. Now again, there could be different formulations, some more effective than others. However, if you look at those who are positive 
for the gene, you can see those who were getting glutiramer acetate had a slightly lower change in disability. A lot of variation from person to person, but on average, the mean is less change. Going above zero means increasing EDSS, means your disability is getting worse. So those getting glutiramer acetate here were doing better, p-value 0 0.0096, easily statistically significant. How about the Accelerated Cure Project? They looked at new lesions per year. Again, people who were negative for the gene on the left and positive for the gene on the right. If you looked at people who were negative, those getting glutiramer acetate compared to interferon had slightly more new lesions, whereas those who were positive for the gene had slightly fewer. Everything seems to be in the same direction. Again, there are biases in these non-randomized trials, but the fact that they all go in the same direction, supporting that people who have this gene getting glutiramer acetate seem to have a better response, and it corroborates what's shown in the randomized trial, the COMBI-RX data. So what is this gene anyway? HLA-A301. There's actually not that much research on it. It's fairly common. 30 to 35 percent of Europeans with MS do carry at least one copy of this allele. The rate may vary in different ethnicities. There's some research in other areas. For instance, people with this gene may get more side effects with the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines, more fever and chills. Nothing serious, though, as far as I could tell. It's linked to lower survival in people with cancer getting certain medications. These are drugs called immune checkpoint inhibitors, drugs that essentially decrease the regulation of your immune system so that it's more likely to attack cancer, such as the drug Keytruda. It's not a associated with multiple sclerosis risks. So your risk of getting MS is not higher just because you have this gene. There actually is some association, but it's only because this gene is linked to the other gene, HLA-GRB1-1501, which is linked to multiple sclerosis. But if you correct for that, this gene does not seem to increase your risk of getting MS. However, in an experiment on mice, experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, if you engineer the mice to only have these T cells that express this haplotype, you can still generate the disease. In other words, you can still develop inflammation of your central nervous system if you have only this haplotype and no other types of T cells. So it seems to be sufficient to generate MS inflammation if you give the mice the right other environmental factors to cause the disease. So why would this gene influence response to glutiramer acetate? It's very hard to say. You could imagine these antigen-presenting cells with this cell surface protein major histocompatibility complex type 1, and because they have this gene which expresses these cell surface proteins, it has certain characteristics and the way it binds different antigen, and maybe glutiramer acetate, the different peptides come in, and they interact with this peptide and it causes some kind of immune tolerance in a certain way. It's too complicated to really wrap my head out, but it does seem to have an effect. I really do believe something is going on. Five different studies, one of them being a randomized controlled trial, it seems to be a real effect. In the study, they note that the CD8 positive or killer T cells with HLA-A301 carrying patients had lower clonality, meaning there was a greater diversity diversity of the T cell repertoire. There weren't a lot of cells doing the same thing, so maybe that's kind of how this works. Now, I do want to give a caveat. I do think the authors were cheating a little bit, a little bit of cherry picking going on here. For instance, in the COMBI-RX data, they actually found no difference in change in EDSS, a measure of disability, and no difference in lesion volume. Generally speaking, it's easier to show a change in MRI findings like gadolinium-enhancing lesions or new T2 lesions because they're highly correlated with relapses. So I think it's a little bit strange they didn't report any positive effect there. Nonetheless, I do think something real is going on. Do I think the effect is so strong that you should go out of your way in order to get this information, know what your genotype is, and choose glutiramer acetate if you're positive for the gene? Well, if you're really concerned about the rate of relapses, frankly, there are better
better drugs out there, having an annualized relapse rate of 0.3, which is what was reported in the COMBI-RX trial in people who were getting latiromyracetate who had the gene, isn't really that good. That's about one relapse every three years. We have drugs that are more effective at suppressing relapses, though glutirimer is quite safe and other drugs do have a risk of significant side effects. And if you're in a position where you're seriously considering between beta seron and glutirimer acetate, having knowledge of your genotype could be useful information. So I don't necessarily think this has immediate practical use. Again, this is a small effect, and most people aren't deciding between these two classes of medications. However, it's the start of something cool. Maybe over many years, there could be many similar publications like this, and even if each individual gene or other things like metabolic profiles have a small effect, if you put them together, they could have a larger effect a 50 or 70 percent effect and then we're really doing personalized medicine i'd be interested to know if you would be interested in getting your genetic information and trying to use that data to give you more personalized medical treatment i also think this is something where maybe in the distant future ai could be useful in applying this information it's very hard for humans to retain this sort of information in two years i'm not sure that i would remember reading this article in that hl LA A301 predicts better response to glutirimer acetate in people with multiple sclerosis, but if there are numerous publications over years and you had a database and used artificial intelligence, maybe in the future it could tell you, based on your genetic profile, comorbidities, metabolic profile, and other data points, you could be a good candidate for this medication or have a lower risk of side effects, that kind of thing, it will be interesting to see. Based on what I said, I'd be interested to know if anyone out there took the medicine glutirimer acetate, copaxone, or glutopa, and had a really good response to it, was very stable on it, and also got the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine and had bad side effects like fever and chills, maybe you have this gene. I'd be interested to know if anyone has this experience, and let me know if you have suggestions for other videos.